Hello, welcome to this video lecture. Uh, this is the Biology Skills Unit 6 learning target. Um, or sorry, not Unit 6, Learning Target 6 in our Biology Skills Unit. Uh, the learning target reads that, uh, or asks you to be able to write the chemical equation in words and symbols for photosynthesis and cellular respiration, and then to explain how photosynthesis is the foundation for all organic macromolecules. This is what you should be writing in your lab notebook. So, um, you know, you see the kind of red line along the left edge of your page. You will draw a solid line from top to bottom. You will write this as the title. There will, of course, be a page number up here. And then you're going to put these categories in. It should take up the whole page. So you need to get out your notebook right now and write this down. And if you don't have your notebook, write this on a piece of paper that you can tape into your notebook. So pause it and get this done. Now, to begin with photosynthesis, to answer this first question that asks you to describe photosynthesis, I'm going to ask you to try to think of the word itself, photosynthesis, and to think back to that root word, background builder that you watched, um, and to separate the word. And notice that the, the by separating the word, you can find the definition. So photo means light. And synthesis means to combine something that is simple to make something that is more complex. So by combining things that are simple, you make them more complex using light. So the definition of photosynthesis then, or the definition we use in class, is, and I'm going to drag these root word definitions out here for a second, is this. It's a process that converts or changes light energy into chemical energy. In this case, carbohydrates. Remember, carbohydrates are one of our four macromolecules uh, that store energy. And that energy can then be used by living things. It also produces organic macromolecules from non-organic sources of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So here's a little molecular model of the hydrogen and oxygen that make up H2O, water. And the um, oxygen, notice the red, that makes up carbon dioxide. So the black is the carbon and then there's two oxygens. So this is the process that takes non-organic sources of carbon and hydrogen and oxygen, water and carbon dioxide are not organic, and makes these kinds of complex molecules like this. And this is a molecule of glucose. It's a carbohydrate and this can be used by living things. This is also considered an organic molecule. So we're going to investigate that a little bit more. How we take water and carbon dioxide and we add light to make glucose. Okay, so photosynthesis. Um, one of the things you are going to be responsible for knowing about photosynthesis is the equation. And to, to use those molecular models again, the equation looks something like this. We take water molecules, we take carbon dioxide molecules, we add those two together and they, as I said before, produce glucose, okay? They produce a little bit more than that. Um, but let's label those here, water, carbon dioxide, glucose, okay? And if we write those out as a chemical equation, the water and carbon dioxide are written like this. This is flipped around. This is the water. This is the carbon dioxide. So why don't I drag these guys out of here. I need a little help with my mouse work here. I'm kind of going a little slow. Um, so we got, ah, let me grab that water. There it is. Okay, water, carbon dioxide, producing glucose, which is this big equation right here, C6H12O6, and O2, which is oxygen. That's the oxygen that you breathe. So here we have a process that converts light energy. Wait a minute. Light energy is not even on here. All we have are a bunch of symbols. Forgot to add that in. Light energy. 
like from a source like this, can take energy from the sun and add it into the equation here. And the end result is that you're going to have light energy turning into chemical energy in the form of glucose. Okay, so in addition to being able to explain the equation for photosynthesis um, and to you need the need to memorize it both by symbol and words, you're also going to need to explain how it forms the foundation for macromolecules. So I already showed you how it forms from water and carbon dioxide, how it makes glucose, and that's the direct output of it. But this glucose molecule, this now so organic source of carbon, becomes the foundation for nucleic acids. And if you zoom in on the chemical structure of nucleic acids, you see a lot of these ring structures built into it. And that's partly derived from this ring structure right here that you can see in the middle of this glucose. Lipids are long strains of strands of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. You see those C's, H's, and O's in there. And lipids, or fats, uh, are an organic molecule because all this carbon was fixed during the process of photosynthesis. And it was later turned on by other cell processes or turned into a fat. But it began as glucose as a result of photosynthesis. And then protein building blocks, the things that create our muscles, they come from carbohydrates originally as well. Now, um, our bodies are not able to easily and directly turn carbs into protein, which is why when you need protein, you don't eat carbohydrates, you eat protein. Um, but nevertheless, um, you will see strands or carbon molecules here with oxygens and hydrogens attached to it and a little bit of nitrogen here and this R which is a, a functional group that we're not going to get into but it's 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 part of what gives a protein monomer or building block its characteristics. So from photosynthesis this process that makes carbohydrates comes all of the other organic or living kinds of carbon molecules. Without this first one, photosynthesis, none of these others would exist and without the four major macromolecules, life doesn't exist. So then we get to respiration. So what's respiration? Respiration or cellular respiration is the opposite. It's when something like a plant takes that glucose and uses it to make something. Um, it's a biological process that converts the chemical energy that was stored during photosynthesis into ATP. And this is a, a word you're going to want to, or a phrase that you're going to want to memorize. ATP is the energy of the cell. And um, the sun, for instance, is not the energy of a plant. A plant uses ATP to grow and do all the things that it does. Um, it only uses the sun's light to make glucose and then it's the glucose that is used to make ATP. So these tomatoes and the person that's picking them is able to move because of ATP. The tomatoes were grown because of ATP, not because of sunlight, but because of the ATP energy that the plant used. So they're used for growth, for building cell parts and activity at the level of the cell or the whole organism. So the equation, because you need to memorize the equation, looks the same. The only difference is this time we put our glucose on the left. So glucose and oxygen produce carbon dioxide and water. And it's a cycle. And we'll talk more about this when we talk about ecology. But if you go back and look at your equation for photosynthesis, you'll notice it's the exact same things. Glucose, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water. The only difference is which side of the equation they're on. So if you're making glucose from the sun's energy, it's photosynthesis. If you are using glucose to release chemical energy, it's called respiration. So out of this comes chemical energy, which is, if you guys remember, ATP and heat. Okay, those are what come out of this equation. All right, and we will talk more about the importance of that in our unit on ecology. Thanks for listening, guys.